Good evening and welcome to Citizen AY, the platform where we speak truth to power. Uh, this evening, we want to go a little bit into a bit of a discussion. Um, you've got a video, uh, which is courtesy of um, the, um, the group, or DBN, I think it is called. But I want to um, really go into the video in detail. And I want to um, talk about what he actually talks about here. Uh, the video is titled Hypocrisy by the Establishment. Let me just see what that comes. That up, hang on. Sorry. Pardon. Okay. So it's called Hypocrisy by the Establishment. Now, um, one of the things that I wanted to do is um, to the left, you will see that I've got something to the left of that shot of the man in the middle. You will see what I've written. And what I've written basically states, uh, let's have a look. It states here, and I'll bring that back in a second. It says here, this is the order of St. Michael and St. George in an enameled painting in which St. Michael, a white person, standing on the neck of a devil. The devil in the painting, in this case, is a black man. Uh, this is what the establishment hands out as, uh, as, as, um, Honors and they call them sirs. Um, it, it is sickening. Um, those are the words I wrote there. Now I want you to uh, just uh, one second. Let me bring this back up on. Yeah, so we are. So now there we are. Hello there. Um, yes, on this platform, uh, as you all know, as you well know, we speak truth to power. That is our um, our motto. Uh, we believe in speaking truth to power. Uh, many. Uh, people who are in support of the current uh, establishment, royal family, and everything else, are uh, they saying to us that, no, of course, they're not racist and everything. And we're here on the show to say uh, it is very much the case that it's the other, the other way around. They are very much, it is a racist system, and we must call it what it is. And at this, in this, at this juncture, I, I, I urge every black person, we don't have to wait for the establishment to, to tell us what we need to do. Uh, we, as black people, people collectively, we need to begin to address the issue of the fact that racism has forced us all to internalize um, unjust and unfair uh, treatment. Uh, let me say that again. Racism has forced us to accept unjust and unfair racism perfected on us all around the world. And it is up to us to address that issue. Uh, again, I don't say this with any um, apology. I'm say, stating the fact. Um, when you are a black person, subconsciously, you are told to accept the injustice. And how do I mean you are accepting injustice? You accept injustice when you say, anytime you talk about reparation, oh, no, 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 we can move on from that. We don't have to discuss that. Um, nobody has told the Jews to move on when they talk about reparations. They were given reparations. They were they, they they asked for it. Uh, maybe they were not they weren't given. Maybe they they fought for it. Maybe it's a combination of both. But sent, certain th sent, one thing is certain. Um, they they stood up for it. We must stand up for our own. Uh, stand up uh, against this racism, and we need to do it as a community, uh, collectively. It's not a job for one person among us. It's for all of us. So whatever the establishment does, we need to equip ourselves to begin to call out racism, the daily racism that we suffer from. And that's also, this is not about anybody feeling uh, sorry. Sorry will not solve racism. Apologize, feeling sorry about it will not solve it. Doing something about it. Restitution, i.e. reparation, working as black people actively towards that in every community, everywhere. Many of the African communities that we have, we do not have a monetary system backing our communities. So if you go into any African community anywhere in the world, the support system is simply not there. How many times do we spend money in our community? Uh, the money that comes in, it goes out faster than it would in other communities. That's a fact. So somebody earns money, um, a, a black man, we will go and buy a flash car, flash everything, with labels and everything else. And when you go and look at what we bought, there's nothing to do. It bears no relation to the, the, to the people who we are living with in the same community. The money is spent outside of our community. And then we wonder why there is no funds. These are things that has, that has, that has pushed us. When you feel a sense of lack of self-worth, which racism has trained us 
has the system has trained us to have a lack of self-worth because when you speak up and say this is unfair this is unjust move on okay we've dealt with it and again what i will say is for as long as those who perpetuate racism are the ones who are writing the rules around racism racism and and, and the injustice it brings and no change will happen uh, we black people are the ones take on this we must own this and we must teach our kids and, and, I, and, I stay, and I say it unapologetically. Unapologetically. You notice I'm saying that very, very slowly because I want to be very clear in the statement I'm making on this. We must confront racism as a community. This is not a job for one black person alone. The entire black race in the world must take ownership of this. That is the only way we will succeed. So when I play these videos, when I'm talking about this, please do not misunderstand me. In no way am I seeking pity. We don't need pity. Pity will not give us reparations. Pity will not give us equality. We are the ones who will have to walk towards that as black people and restore our community, restore our pride in who we are as human beings. Remind ourselves that we are the fourth people on the planet. Our history is of immense importance in this struggle. And we need to start healing millions of black people around the world because daily we internalize racism without knowing it because the system is designed that way. And it is up to us now to now create an alternative system whereby we will not give racism room to breathe anywhere where black people is. That is our job. Yes, and we can do it. It's not a daunting task. It's a task that, task that we must take on. And we must pass it from one generation to the next. That is the job that we must take on. Now, I want to play this to you. I'll just stop there um, for now. I want to play this to you. What you see in the picture is what I just told you. Um, St. Michael it is standing on top of... Uh, uh, let me just see if I can bring that up again. Let me see. Can I bring it up here? Yeah, St. Michael sitting on top of uh, um, a white person standing on the neck of a black person. And of course, as, they, as you will hear in the narrative, it reminds you of the same, that same scenario is George Floyd uh, all over again. So they, they, when they said we've moved forward in terms of racism, you can see we haven't. Because that in that picture, it represents exactly the same thing that was done to George Floyd and it's still happening today. We heard about the Leon something, that was that was killed by the police uh, recently, and you know these are all symbols and signs. Of course, we're not recognizing it as black people. We need to start recognizing it. We've got to do a better job of teaching ourselves to prepare ourselves to break down all of the barriers that have been put in front of us via this racism that we experience on a daily basis. Now let's listen to this broadcast. And in the context, keep I'm keeping that picture there right the way through all this, so you can relate to it and look at it and see the impact. They are giving out George. Uh, St. Michael and St. George Cross that actually depicts this, this, this horrendous, horrendous practice. Uh, let me play that now. The highest award given to British officials who work abroad is the Order of St. Michael and St. George. This consists of a star with a little enameled painting and the painting shows the angel St. Michael standing on the neck of the devil and the devil is a black man. Mm -hmm. This image is very similar to one that we've become familiar with. Did you hear that? The devil is a black man. And this is what the establishment hands out as, uh, for services done to the, for the nation. One that we've become familiar with. A policeman kneeling on George Floyd's neck as he says, I can't breathe. And the idea of standing or kneeling on the neck of a black man is deeply embedded in these notions of dominance of white people over black people, the mm -hmm. dominance of Western nations over other countries. Yeah. Now, one of the recipients of this award was a man called Sir Evelyn Baring. Sir Evelyn Baring was the grandfather of someone called Mary Wakefield. Mary Wakefield is the wife of Dominic Cummings, Boris Johnson's chief advisor, a man who has done more to cover up the record of current events mm -hmm. than anyone else in this government. Mm -hmm. Sir Evelyn Baring was governor of Kenya when Kenya was a colonial possession mm -hmm. of the United Kingdom. 
And while he was there in the 1950s, he instituted a system of concentration camps, which even his own attorney general compared to those run by the Nazis. He drove into these concentration camps and fortified villages. Almost the entire population of the Kikuyu people, then numbering over a million people. Huge numbers died, some of them of starvation and disease. Many beaten to death, burnt to death, tortured to death. Repeatedly, men were castrated. In Hear that? Repeatedly, men were castrated. In many of those cases, did like this, underfoot. And this is why we need to call out racism. And, 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 and it's a job for us all. And at no point, at no point, am I saying this for any pity. We don't need your pity. This is a job for us as black people around the world. Take ownership of this and redress this injustice, only us. It is only us who can confront this ourselves and reject any attempt to, to, to subliminally get us to accept the injustice, the daily injustice that racism brings. And those who created the so-called, the, the rules around how to address racism. You cannot write any rules around racism if you are not a black person. Because you're simply going to be writing it from the point of view of the perpetrator. And that is the fact. You need to address the fact that those who must write the rules around racism, the type of racism we're talking about against black people and people of color, we must be the ones. We, the ones who, are, who bear the brunt of that racism, must be the ones who will write the rules. And we're not going to write, wait for anybody to tell us. We will make sure that that rule is something that will be universally accepted around the world. It currently stands. We will continue to highlight the failings of the current racist, racism systems, racism, uh, anti-racism systems, because they, they, they're simply inadequate. They don't go to the heart of the matter. They don't address the issues. And this thing here, to just go in, I mean, the, this, this bearing, you know, I mean, and he received the George Cross. I'm bringing all this up because these are the things that we need to do. In the, in the light of the issue of what they've done to Meghan and to Harry and, and all of that, we need to call out racism. And it is our job as black people. Uh, the, the, the system that created racism will not address it. And let me, let me be very, very clear. The system, this current system that created racism will do everything it can to prevent the real resolution, the, the real, real, real solving of the problem once and for all. They will never let it happen because it's in the interest to keep black people on the foot. It is as simple as that. To have in 2021, the George, St. George and St. Michael Cross. And I've just been looking, incredibly enough, I've just found that it has been sold. This, this St. George and St. Michael, where a black man is, is on the foot. I, I, incredibly, incredibly enough, I, I looked and I find that it is actually on, it is on, it's been sold in Amazon. Uh, or, 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 or fall enough. It is on Amazon. I kid you not. Uh, let me see if I can give you the picture. I, I, I just want you to, let me see if I can see a picture. Can you see that? That is on Amazon. And that is, you see, white man, black man on that. It is sold at £6.84 in Amazon. So we, as a community, we need to address that. Uh, they can write whatever. We need, to, we need to counter that as a black community. It's not a job for one person. I'm just bringing it. And see, can you see the similarity? See? Can you see that? Look at the similarity between that and what you have on the screen. Can you see that? This is being sold in Amazon. It's £6.84. Can you see that? I'm just showing you. So that you know that this is deeply embedded in the society. And that's the type of racism that we will never, if we don't address that, we cannot fix anything else. We cannot solve myriad of problems that we face. And it's up to us as black people to address that. I'm glad that um, the man on the screen, a white man, is at pointing out those things. And we need to listen out. And we have allies. But in the end, the job to address and conclusively banish racism from the lives of millions of Africans, that job ultimately falls on the shoulders of Africans ourselves, collectively, uh, in our communities. Uh, but let's listen on.
Some camps, almost the entire population of children died. And until the Mau Mau are destroyed, the innocent too will See? suffer. Right, and even when you look at the picture there, let's go back. The innocent will suffer. You see? Again, look at that. Mau Mau are that. destroyed. Listen. The innocent too will suffer. And it's the fair skinned one or white kid or whatever, you know. Can you see what they've done there? So it's still the same old issue. It was Evelyn Baring who oversaw the creation of this system. Sir Evelyn Baring, upon whom rests the main responsibility. Yeah, Sir Evelyn, that's a picture. Remember that face in Kenya. And there is no apology for the castration of God knows how many. The killing of how, do, how many million, we don't even know. And their records have been burnt. And these are things that, we should be, that we've been shielded from knowing and learning and, and, and being able to actually address. And yet, the same people that do this will now come and tell us, oh, our economy is bad, uh, this is and without taking ownership for the very thing they've done to actually, uh, 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 to actually do what they've done to, 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 to oppress and suppress and indeed keep the system of racism going. But these are the things that we need to address. So here we go. Responsibility of the campaign. We are making progress in that struggle, and we are all confident. The progress in what struggle? It's not a struggle. It's the way they use the word. You're oppressing people, and you say it's a struggle. <laughs> it's a joke. Now let's uh, carry on. Let's carry on. Uh, let's have a look at how we're gonna do this. Let me see. I, I want to get something up quickly. But anyway, let's watch this for a minute, and I'll carry on. But in the end, we will succeed. He also directly authorized the beating to death of people within those camps. When Labour mm -hmm. MPs asked inconvenient questions about this, on one particular occasion when 11 men were beaten to death, he told the colonial secretary to tell the MPs that they had died from drinking contaminated water. Before Britain left mm -hmm. Kenya, there you was see? an order sent down, implemented by a special branch, to conduct what they called a thorough purge of the archive. They burnt crate after crate of documents. One of the orders instructed that if there were too many documents to burn, they should be packed into weighted crates, taken as far from the coast as practicable, and dumped into very deep water without currents. They erased not only the evidence of what happened in Kenya, but much of what happened in Malaya. The British troops in Malaya slowly but steadily are smashing the Reds' reign of terror, and they'll keep at it till the job's done. In See Yemen, that? where Britain fought its dirty war, in Aden. We're going to be extremely firm and uh, extremely mean. If anyone starts in trouble, they'll just get the head blown off. Did you hear that? Uh, they'll get the message in time. Did you hear that? If there anybody starts any trouble, they'll just get their head blown off. Uh, and, and, I mean, it is, these are the kind of things that we need to address. We must address it, community. We have to address it. Um, I mean... They, they even have it in engravings. You know, this is these are is in engravings. These are the things that we have got to address as community. The same picture there. Again, this is all symbols to make sure that black people and people of color never feel equal. Never feel they are worth anything. And it is your program to psychologically accept that you are less than. That's not the case. We need to stand up against this completely. The first people of the planet are black people. That is an undeniable fact. There's a lady called Dinkesh. She's about over 2 million years old in terms of her bones. She's a black woman found in Ethiopia. Don't take my word for it. Go and do the research and you'll see what I'm telling you is a fact. We need to wake up and start addressing this, on, in, this, on, this, this it's 700 years plus injustice. Now let's go ahead and play this video. Go ahead. Yeah. You see that? We in remember here. all this in the context of Boris Johnson telling us that to pull down statues is to lie about our history. The entire history that we are told about British imperialism is a lie. We, as a nation, have a greater level of pride. Let me just do that again. I think you need to hear this now. It's important to hear that. The entire history that we are told about British imperialism is a lie. Is a lie. These are the, this, you're hearing the facts now for the first time if you watch this video. And I'm playing this particularly for those of us who are Africans. Because many of us, we don't 
question what we are being told about ourselves. The narrative of ourselves is often from an European point of view, which has a different spin on it, without giving, without telling the story as it should be told, so we get the proper context. You see, when you don't put the proper context, you can sell something to somebody, something to something to somebody that would actually ultimately kill them and make them believe that it's actually something that was good for them. And that's why context is important. And, and, and our own interpretation, our narrative from our African eyes is extremely important because the world we're living in is a world full of lies. But listen on one more time to hear what he's saying, to make sure. Boris Johnson telling us that pull down statues is to lie about our history. The entire history that we are told about British imperialism is a lie. We, as a nation, have a greater level of pride in our empire than any other European nation. People look back with nostalgia to Britain's imperial past. Mm -hmm. That's impossible to understand unless we understand the massive fabric of lies, of deletions, which has airbrushed the colonial atrocities practiced everywhere. The massive lies and deletions which are airbrushed. Airbrushed. Listen on. Where we went. Imperialism has long been justified through the notion that the white man had a duty to civilize the so-called other races. Racism is an ideology, and to a very large extent it was created by British theorists. Mm -hmm. You can take it back to the late 18th century and the work of a physician called Charles White, who was one of the people who formalized this idea that there's a sort of ladder of life, and the white man is at the top of that ladder, and mm -hmm. below the white man on the mm -hmm. ladder is a white woman and below that were people with dark skin that mm -hmm. ideology remains with us today. today it's that ideology which led to the policeman kneeling on the neck of george floyd institutional racism mm -hmm. systemic racism and a huge part of that ideology began here in the united kingdom to mm -hmm. justify our seizure of other people's resources and other people's lives these relationships continue by other means. Through our trade relationships today, which are often highly coercive, enforced by offshore tribunals of corporate lawyers, basically forcing countries to give up their natural resources, enforced by international debt. Corporate lawyers, international debt. Are you getting the drift? And yet they will tell us, oh, racism has improved. What has really changed? What has really changed? The system is just trying to play tricks, whereas the system remains as it ever was. A system of oppression, suppression, and prevention of the people of color, black people and people of color, to stand up for their own rights, whilst they're being continually exploited. Exploitation is not something to feel sorry about. It's an injustice that we must all speak up about and, 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 and actually be totally vehemently reject and begin to ensure again for africans in africa and around the world we begin to speak up and make sure we challenge the racist system and ensure we put in place systems that will no longer allow us to that will not that that will prevent any attempt to get us to subconsciously accept injustice because that's a problem essential problem is the system as it currently stands is designed to ensure that black people subconsciously accept injustice as part of what their of their of their narrative of how that life will be for for black people around the world and we need to reject it let's go on and what we see is a net drain of wealth from the poor nations into the rich nation this wealth is not just being taken from other people in the world today it's also being taken from future generations the capacity of the earth to support us is being wrecked by those who are burning through the earth's resources as quickly as possible, who are destroying our life support system. Environmental destruction, imperialism, racism, these are intimately connected. They all mesh together as part of a global system of injustice. It's not just the bad stuff in history that they don't want us to see. Mm -hmm. It's also the good stuff the massive role of the slave revolts and rebellions of the slave you understand that they do not ever want to see black men ever standing up 
because when a black man stands up, let me put it this way, listen to this, and I'll, it's also the good stuff, listen. the massive role of the slave revolt. Right. And you see that how that black man, how a black man, myself, standing with a knife in hand, challenges this narrative. And you see that. I'm trying to put symbols. It's really important to understand the rules of symbols. Because that, for them, threatens their own narrative. And you see that. I want to just, right next there, I'm going to try and, let me play one more. Here we go. Because you can see the sword is about to lift it up in the same vein as the in the picture. If you see, you see, you see that they don't want that to be those who have got this this and I and people who have got this racist tendencies they have a psychological disorder of some kind that they're refusing to address and they're projecting their fears onto millions of black people around the world. You heard me right. They are projecting their own weaknesses and fears to black people around the world. That is one of the things we need to address. Now, um, let me play on. It's very important. That's actually quite a very important point there. I, I wanted to just keep that. And just keep that. I'll, I'll talk on that for a few minutes. Like I said, because the St. George's Cross, you see, it's putting that up. And, and if you look, let me go forward. Um, it, let me play. Rebellions of... So you can see that, they, you know, you see, one second, symbols is important, go on. The slaves themselves and the ex-slaves who through their advocacy managed to generate a huge amount of outrage about the slave trade and what it involved. Similarly, the history um, I'll of that. resistance. Hang on, let me just go back again. Not just the bad stuff. Who are burning through the Earth's resources time, as quickly please. as Big possible, who are destroying our life support system. Environmental destruction, imperialism, racism, these are intimately connected. They all mesh together as part of a global system of injustice. It's not just the bad stuff in history that they don't want us to see. It's also the good stuff, the massive role of... Go back again. I'm just trying to show you something. So, so you see that. Um, anyway, you can see the picture there. That's what, and, the, and here's the perception. They believe that the, the very thing they've done is what we will do um, if, we, if there's ever to be equality. And nothing can be further from the truth. But what we are saying is that as people in 2021, you cannot continue to tell me to look away from the injustice that's been has been forced upon my ancestors and not think it's time for it to be redressed and for you to continue with that injustice by drawing up this kind of thing. You cannot tell me to, you're tying my, black people's hands are literally being tied behind our back and for us to accept the unjust system. And it is for us to untie ourselves. Don't wait for somebody to do it for us. We have to untie ourselves and then redraw the balance. We have to get the balance ourselves. And I'm saying this, this is a major for, for black people. We need to. Our communities are damaged by racism in the entire world. In the entire world. It's not to feel sorry about. It's for us to roll up our sleeves. Like I said, many of our communities, there is no, when you, be, when you build anything, if you, have, if you go and look at our communities, the money is only going one way, out. It doesn't come back in. We buy from other places. We buy in this all the system is geared to ensure we continue to buy outside. We don't build anything. And we need to redress that. So let me just play this to the end. Of the slaves themselves and the ex-slaves who through their advocacy managed to generate a huge amount of outrage about the slave trade and what it involved. Similarly, the history of resistance so, and rebellion and some people did fight back. these shores. Uh, let me say, and some people, just like this man, spoke up against the injustice, and we mustn't forget them. And we are we applaud their work. Many people, 
uh, many, many names have actually spoken up against the injustices. Many Europeans have spoken up, and we recognize that. But in the end, like I said, the job to redress this balance falls on the shoulders of us Africans. We need to recognize that um, there's nobody else who will help us and to, to deal with this, this internalized racism that we are all suffering from collectively. Uh, it is, that job is something that we must address. The experts, the black people who, have got, who are experts among themselves and the system, we need to build a system whereby every single black person will actually go through a training, a training of some kind of system to actually de, de um, uh, you know, to, to, to wake them up from this conscious, subconscious acceptance, subconsciously accepting of injustice that the racism brings. And that is a huge task, but it's one that we are equal to. I know we are more than capable of, uh, capable to, 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 to achieve that. So I just want to reach out to any, every black person on this planet, literally. Uh, you can do this. It's nothing to feel sorry about. This is something that happened. It's time for us as a community to collectively address it. I mean, if you go to any community, a black community, there are, we don't, the economy is not built around monetary uh, economic system. It's a dependency economic system. We're buying you stuff. We're buying stuff. We're not building anything. And it's, that's, it's entire, the system, we need to change that ourselves. And we need to build that. Yes, obstacles we put in our way. It is up to us now to recognize the obst those obstacles and achieve what we need to do, which is to ensure that Africa is indeed permanently restored back. We dismantle the, the current uh, European nations imposed on, on, on Africa because the, the, the nation names that you have, Nigeria was never African. Um, and, you know, um, 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 many other countries that, you, that, 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 that we know now, they're never African names. The names that, of that, that, that was created by Europeans as a way of controlling, uh, you know, controlling resources out of those areas. It's not for, they, they didn't rename it for the, for the benefit of Africans. Those countries were not renamed for the benefit of Africans. They were, they were renamed for the benefit of those countries who took control of the people and the resources in Africa. Very important to understand that difference. Here we go. A huge range of people's movements amongst the working classes, amongst the middle classes, trying to create a better, juster, more democratic nation, often hundreds of years before their visions came to fruition. And by learning from that history, as well as by learning from our history of atrocities, these two hidden histories, we can begin to understand where we stand, why we are where we are, and how, from that position, we can start to build a better world. Double Down News brings the big issues together. It shows how they fit into the wider story, the story of where we are and how we got here, and the story of how we need to change, how we need to build a better world. So please support Double Down News through Patreon and allow this journalism to flourish. So um, that's for them, for themselves. Um, I may, may, I may cut that bit off. I'm not sure, but uh, you know, but I did, like I said, I, I, I found what they were saying thoroughly refreshing but then there are points that we can take on take on board ourselves and actually say right you know what this is actually you know this is actually the case now let me just uh, you know i'm I, i'm gonna i'm making a point one more final thing for those of you who think that it is um ancient what i'm doing i'm actually going to do something for you now i'm going to do something for you michael palin himself no doubt and i'm going to put a picture up has actually said it is time for that to be redesigned. So I'm going to put you a picture. So for those of you who think, oh, it's so ancient, it is not true. It is not real. And you will see a picture literally now. And I want that to be something that will be, to be said in your mind, that racism is alive and kicking. It's alive and kicking. And the queen still handed out that same St. Michael and St. George. And... Palin is 2020 is saying that it needs to be redesigned. Now, let me just do that before I wrap this up. Sorry about this. Sorry about that. Sorry, I'm just thinking aloud. 
Okay, I know what's going on, but that's okay. I might not be able to do it now, but if I don't, I will try and do one more thing. And see. Okay, no problem. Got it. Oh, what? No problem, not a problem at all. Okay. Right, okay. Now, just give me a couple of minutes because I want you, this is, because I want to picture. That picture looks ancient. It looks like it's old. But um, I want to conclusively put it in your mind to make sure you understand that there is a link to the present. And until we address that, and we shouldn't shy away from this. Uh, we shouldn't. We need to confront this as a society, as black people, nobody else. This is down to us to restore our dignity as black people. Nobody, you see, freedom is never given. You take it. Understand me? Freedom is never given. We must take it. And that's what we are trying to do now. I'm going to do this. I'm going to, and I'll get it ready to you. You will see it in a minute. Is that it? No. Okay. Wait, what's going on here? Beg your pardon. Begging your pardon. Give me a minute. Give me a minute. One second. Yes, uh, one final thing just before that picture. In fact, I'll put it in the middle. Now that is done, put it in the middle here. And it won't let me do it. Okay. So I'll do, I wanted to just show you in, in that video. I'm going to take this one. And I'm Second, please. I'm putting it in the middle. So right there, I even make it. See the picture here. What you see here is what in the there. George, and it is still current. The reason I'm putting it there, and you can see the Queen. That's the link right there. I want you to have that in your mind. I want you to have that in your mind and understand. Specifically to black people, the system is inherently racist, and I'm not saying that to, uh, to sort of it's not a knee-jerk reaction. I'm looking at the evidence. The evidence is what is this is, and you've, uh, we've already explained to you. Um, and again, I'll put a link. Let me read to you what uh, Michael Palin said about this. Let me see if I can for you. Put it off now. And I'll put it up now. So on that alone, got it. Okay, now I'm gonna read something to you. So uh, so now they're saying the cabinet office has said the recipients of the Queen's racist knighthood corner can exchange the award for an updated design after a petition was launched. It shouldn't even have to be that we have to exchange. Because to exchange it means you don't want to change it. And you must change it. We are telling you, nobody of any... And the person, I don't know who this guy is. I presume this is a black guy, I think. I'm not quite sure. And he's not aware of the significance. And this is the danger. That's the danger of symbolism. If you don't understand what you're accepting, you accept it. Subconsciously, you are accepting injustice. And that's the reason why we're talking about racism. And that's why we are very, very clear about why this thing must come crumbling down. No excuses, no ifs, ifs no buts. Um, so they said the cabinet office has said the recipients of the Queen's racist knighthood honor can exchange the award for an updated design after a petition was launched claiming the, insig the insignia is racist uh, and looks similar to George Floyd's, Floyd's killing. The insignia, insignia for the most distinguished order of St. Michael and St. George, one of the Queen's highest honors, once featured a picture of a white angel standing on the neck of a black man. These are things that we're talking about. So the image which was changed in, 21, in 2011 to feature a knight, light-skinned devil is actually a depiction of an acting girl, Michael, defeating Satan. So, but the new petition says the design, design didn't go far enough and wants it to be completely overhauled. A multi-pattern staff, Michael Palin, was among those who had called for the honor to be changed once again after seeing its original incarnation. Um, in response to the question from the cabinet, from the mail online, the cabinet office said Wednesday that people who received the honor uh, before it was updated can exchange it for a newer one. 
I mean, and look at it. So now you can see. So that's the picture there. And in fact, I'll see if I can even hazard and try and get that picture in for you. You can still see. This is still what they are giving out today. I am so incensed. This is not, this is, I, I don't know how else to explain this to you. I don't know. If you're not incensed when I'm, as I'm telling you this, I don't know what to say to you. Let me get this out. Okay, good. Perfect. Now, I'm going to do this. I know it's taking a while, but please do bear with me. I'm going to put that picture under my Michael one. This is the current picture that you will see that people are still being given even as we speak. Even as we speak. So, here we go. That, you see? Can you see? I'm putting it in there so you understand exactly what is wrong with this. That is what makes it back to God. And you see, can you see the similarity? It's still the same thing. In 2021, you will still get a picture. You see? You see? That's a deeply racist signal. Deeply racist. And you go and ask, every black person who is getting an award, they don't understand or home in on this. And that is like you're, you're given a seal of approval to oppression. Every time you hand out this award, with that thing not changed in the middle, you are given a seal of approval, approval to oppression. And that is the problem. And I, I, I wanted to bring this up and look at this, you know, squarely, uh, dispassionately. And I'm telling you now, this is wrong. It is wrong. And on the light, in the light of this, to now find that the family rejects Achi because he's so-called, quote-unquote, the color of his skin. You can now understand that the system we are in is a racist system. And I make no apologies for saying that. The system we are in is a racist system. We need to call it out as it is. And the platform that we are on here is Citizen AY, the platform where we speak truth to power. And of course, this is a truth that we must speak to power. We apologize to no one for speaking truth to power. We all must take on this, this, this task unquestionably. Take, it, take on it head on. Anyway, um, very, very important. I've showed you certain things, and I've tried to bring from the pre from the past to the present. And as we speak right now, that is what they have. It's not good enough to say you can exchange it. No. You should recall all of it. You should recall. All, every single award that's ever been given should be recalled. And the ones, the, and, and, and anybody living, take it, remake it to ensure that you make, and you make, uh, make it certain. This is not acceptable at all. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Citizen AY, the platform where we speak truth to people. Um, I've, I'm doing something here, and this is not to help. I have this product, product that I'm using, AG Serra. And that product, product, um, it's it's a it's a plant based product, um, and what I, I've started using it myself. I've been using it since about what about December time. I started using it, and um, I've been keeping notes. Now it's one sachet a day. You take a sachet a day, yeah. So I take a sachet a day, uh, in, one in the morning I do, um, and that's what it is. And you just open it and pour it onto your tongue, um, and in the morning before anything else and then you drink warm water with it now what i've done i as you all know i've got chronic pain so with the chronic pain it made things really bad and a friend of mine who also had issues she said oh why don't you try this I, this is what i use i try and it helps me and i thought i tried everything else cbd oil everything else it wasn't really after a while it wasn't really helping so i used it i started using this for about two months now and and i can see that it is helping i'm not saying it stopped the pain totally but it's made it manageable for me. I'm, it's more manageable. I'm still in chronic pain. I still can't walk far because of my chronic back pain. I've got metal plates in my back. So that is um, an issue. So I use a mobility scooter to get around if I have to walk far, you know. Um, but, I'm, you know, all that, I'm still doing this because I passionately believe in our nation. But this is something that it might be beneficial to people. And this, they sell this product all over the world. So um, if you're interested, 
um, do get in touch to, with Citizen AY. Leave a message in the comment box or inbox me on the number that you see there. WhatsApp me and uh, talk to me about AG Sarah. And uh, I, I can tell you how we can go about doing that. Um, and that can be helpful. Um, this is all to help. Um, what I would actually like to say is that um, I recognize that we have our own products back home. Um, what we need to do to be able to to have safety and security to allow those things to flourish. And then we can promote it just like we're promoting this. Because they can only promote things like this from Malaysia and other countries because their country is very safe and secure. We don't have that in Nigeria, in that contraption called Nigeria, or in Yoruba land. And this time, when we get Yoruba land, these are the, we are going to provide conditions in which people, our local medicines will, will, be, will be sold around the world and promoted just like we're promoting this one. So, but in the meantime, Please, if you can, if you're interested in this, if it can help you, um, it can, it's meant to help with in terms of um, diabetes and other things as well. It's meant to to help. I don't know, but I can only vouch for what I've done so far. If you if it resonates with you, please do share it. It's called AG Sarah. Get in touch. Uh, the number is on the screen. Um, so there we have that done. Uh, what I want to say at this point is please subscribe to us. Click on the button that you see on the screen, the red button on Citizen AY on YouTube. Go and do so now. I thank you all for joining me. Talk soon. Bye for now. Bye.